Hey everyone, welcome to Fellowship of the Frugal. My name is Daniel, and in today's video I'm going to explain what annual percentage yield is, or APY, as you probably see it on some documents. I'm going to go through what it means, what it's not. I'm going to go through a couple of examples to help explain it, and then I'm going to cover a common objection that I hear being out in the field on this very thing right now. In fact, the reason I'm doing this video is because of this very issue that I get asked about time and time again as we are currently running CD specials and a lot of institutions are running CD specials. So this will certainly be applicable to you if you're a CD shopper. So as always, if you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe and comment and check out my other videos and I'll be sure to get out some more material in the future. Thank you. Very simply put, APY or annual percentage yield is simply the standard that's been given to financial institutions who are rate shoppers. So there's a rule that went into effect many years ago called TISA or the Truth and Savings Act. And what that did, in fact, I have a, a link in the description to read further up on it if you want to. But what that rule did is it leveled the playing field for rate shoppers. So it made the financial institutions go by the same standard in case somebody ever called and said, hey, what are you paying on, on, on your CDs right now? Or what are you paying on your savings accounts? The answer that the institution has to give is going to be quoted as an annual percentage yield. Because it used to, before that, it used to be where they could say something like, hey, we're paying 10% on our CDs, but then they'll have so many fees and other things that it really amounts to about a 1% yield, just as an extreme example. But this way it leveled the playing field so that rate shoppers can truly do an apples to apples comparison. So you have a standard rate that your product is going to have and whatever that rate is, that's one thing. But your rate, in addition to your compounding interest on an annual basis, is what your annual percentage yield is. So simply put, your rate is going to be one thing. Your, your APY is always going to be slightly higher than that. So as an example, your APY may be 5% on something. Your current rate will actually be a little bit less than that, but it's assuming that you are compounding the interest inside of the product that you have. So if you're taking your interest out, whether it be like a monthly check payment to you for the interest, your APY is not going to be the same because it assumes compounding interest. That's a real difference between regular interest rate and then your APY on your particular product. Now to really help flesh this out, I'm gonna go through a couple of examples and then I'll cover a common question that I get afterwards. So here we go. All right, so we're looking at the first example here, which is gonna be a CD where a person deposits $100,000 into a seven month CD and is paying 5% APY. So the question is, what will you have at the end of the seven months? Now what everybody tries to do here is they'll take the $100,000 and multiply it by the 5%, which is 0 0.05, and the answer to that is $5,000. So that's what you have at the end of the seven months, right? No, that is incorrect. That is not how you do this, because remember, the APY is an annual percentage, and the seven month is not an annual number. It is partial to it. It's seven out of the 12 months. So what you have to do is you figure out the monthly payment using the APY by dividing the end result by 12 months. So the end result is the 5,000 that I refer to because that's the annual number. And so if you take the annual number, divide it by 12, that gives you this as a monthly payment, which is the $416.67 per month. So that gives you your monthly payment. And then you take that number and you multiply it by the number of months in your CD, which in this case is a seven month CD. So $416.67 times seven months equals $2,916.69. This gives you the end dollar amount that you would get at the end of your term on the CD. So this is not the 5,000 because it is not 12 months on the CD. But if you notice, since it is, since seven months is slightly more than half of the year, this number should be slightly more than half of this number, which it is. So it makes sense to check out there. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it 
is to take the APY and multiply it by the number of months in the CD divided by 12. The answer to this is then multiplied by your opening deposit. So what do I mean? All right, step one is you take your APY, 0 0.05, times 7 divided by 12. So you have to isolate that number as I did with the parentheses here. So the end result here, and I carried out a few spaces, is 0 0.029167. So you take that number and multiply it by your original deposit. So in this case, $100,000 times that number equals $2,906 dollars and seventy cents. So you notice these two numbers are off by a penny, but this is a, these are simplified ways of determining what your interest is going to be by the end of the term. This is not a 100 percent accurate way of doing it down to the very penny, but it is extremely close. And again, it's a simplified way of doing it, and it's close enough to give you what you need to know if you're trying to determine what you're going to have at the end of the CD. These are the two easiest ways of doing it that are going to be pretty close to what you get. And in order to show a 100% accurate way to do it, the math will be much more complicated. And I really don't want to get into that because I try to keep everything, everything simplified. And so these are the best two ways of doing it. Again, extremely close. So that's example one. Now let's look at example two. You have a $50,000 CD that is the eighth month that's paying 4%. So let's look at the first way of doing it. What you do is you take $50,000 times 0 .04 and that gives you $2,000, which is your annual number. But again, this is not an annual CD. It's an eight month CD. So we have to determine what the monthly payment is. So you take the $2,000 number we got divided by 12. That equals $166.67, which is your monthly interest earned. And then you take that number and multiply it by 8, which is your 8-month CD. That gives you $1,333.36. That is the end of your term on the CD. So that number is what you'll have at the end of the CD. That's method 1. Method 2, you take your APY, multiplied by 8 divided by 12. That equals 0 0.02667. You take that number and you multiply it by your deposit. So $50,000 times 0 .02667 equals $1,333.50. That is your end of term. These two numbers are only off by a few pennies, but either way will give you pretty close to what your interest earn is going to be at the end of the CD. So keep these two examples in mind and remember you got to go by what the actual term of the CD is and calculate what your yield is going to be. You cannot use the APY as a bottom figure if your CD is not a 12-month CD. But if I were to give you an example that is a 6-month CD, you could right here, instead of, instead of dividing it by 12 to get your monthly payout, you could just right here just divide that number by 2, and that would give you your 6-month total, and you could just use that. If it was a 12-month CD, he would just use this number here, and you'd skip these other steps. If you have something that's divisible by 6, then your math will be a lot simpler here. But the two examples that I gave you show you how to do it if it's not a 6, 12, or 18-month or 24-month CD that is some other factor, which usually what I see around here as advertising from financial institutions, this is going to be pretty accurate to what I see around here. Hopefully those two examples really clarify what it looks like and how to determine your APY. But one thing that I hear often after I go through an example like that is the person will say, well, wait a minute, I thought I was getting 5% just to use the first example that I covered. I thought I was getting 5%, but what you're showing me is less than 5%. How come I'm not getting 5%? Well, you have to remember the 5% is an annual number. And so if your product is less than that, say seven months, then you can be on track month to month for seven months to hit the 12 month number, the annual number or the APY. But if you end the contract before the 12 months, then your actual dollar yield will show a lower percentage, but that doesn't mean you were paid any less. What it means is that the contract just ended before the year was up. 
Because remember, all institutions have to standardize how they report, and they have to report the annual percentage yield. So think of it this way. If I, if I tell you that I'm going to give you a dollar bill for every month that we meet, and then I, so every month, boom, dollar bill, dollar bill, dollar bill, month after month, and it's on track to have exactly $12 bills by the end of the year, but if you end the contract or if we collectively end the contract before the 12 months are up, then that doesn't mean that I paid you a less rate. It just means you didn't make it to the full 12 months. There's a difference. So it's not comparing apples to apples if you say, oh, wait a minute, I thought you were paying me 5% APY, but then you end the contract before the annual time frame has expired. Those are two different things. Your payment rate, the month after month after month, can be on track to pay your full APY if it's a 12-month contract, but if you pull out early, then obviously you're going to net less than what the APY says. It doesn't mean anything wrong has happened. It just means the, the amount of time to reach that annual standard measurement has not been achieved. So I hope that that helps clear it up. But keep in mind, if you're rate shopping, you're going to be quoted APY. And so you have to remember that if the term in the CD or your particular product is less than 12 months, you have to do the math to figure out exactly what your yield is going to be at the end of it, if that's what you're trying to do on a rate shop situation. So with all that being said, I hope that this helps. I face this question pretty much continuously because of the environment that we're in. A lot of places do CD specials, and I hope this helps. If you like it, of course, comment, subscribe, check out my other videos, and I'll do my best to get you the best information that I can get you on your finances to help you be more financially sound. Thank you.